Good morning and welcome to today's webcast on marketing your organization in times of crisis. We're honored that all of you have joined us this morning for this important topic. I'm Julio Malara, President and CEO of the Business Report. And two things that I want to mention before we get started this morning. First, we are all in this together. It's going to take our organizations and businesses to get our economy going again. We cannot or will not be driven by fear but by a sense of purpose, innovation, insights, and ideas. Ideas are the currency of the future, and we hope to help you spark some from today's webcast. Secondly, while none of us have all the answers, we do know that during times of crises and change, companies must develop unique strategies to maintain market share, and that there are also significant opportunities to actually increase your market share for companies that are willing to make courageous decisions and take bold steps. So it's with these two insights in mind, let me introduce you to our chairman and publisher of the Business Report, Ralph McAllister. Ralph? Good morning. First, we wanna thank Baton Rouge for your support for 37 years. We've been through a lot together and we know we can conquer this challenge too. We are excited to host Gordon Burrell and his team to share their expertise with you today. Knowledge is power, and our goal is to provide you the same knowledge, research, history, and advice the other companies across America have access to in these tough times. We aren't expecting all the answers here, but we hope today will be a catalyst for you to think different in a different world, and it is different. As Julio said, we hope you'll take away at least one great idea that will make a positive change in your business. As we move forward, we want everyone on this webcast to come back strong. We are here to help. Like you, Baton Rouge is our home, and we are in this together. For Business Report 225 and Register 1012 and Daily Report, we say thanks for everything each of you do for our community. Now let's all learn something new. Back to you, Julio. I've had the privilege of uh, seeing uh, Gordon uh, Burrell at uh, two different national conferences, one on the East Coast and one on the West Coast. And so we're very privileged to have them uh, make this presentation today. Gordon Burrell is the founder and the CEO of Burrell Associates, a nationally known marketing research firm specializing in local advertising and marketing. They study trends in advertising and marketing spending and conduct large surveys of local advertising in the United States. We've hired him to help us help you seek to become better informed and make decisions about business during these difficult times. And so it's time for the presentation. Gordon, over to you. Julio, thank you. And thank you, uh, everybody. Um, I'm just a glamorous spokes model. You got two other really great, uh, brilliant people uh, on this webinar as well, Jim Brown and Corey Elliott. Uh, Ralph said you're going to, uh, he hopes you take away at least one good idea. If you do, you'll miss 99 because we got a hundred of them. And uh, we hope that if it's one idea, it's the idea that prompts you into action because now is a great time to be marketing. i going to exude uh, positivity and energy in this uh, webinar. And that might be a little foreign to people who are not on this webinar uh, because you know they've kind of sunken into crisis mode and are hand wringing and everything. So congratulations, you're here. You at least have the open mind to think, wow, there might be some opportunity here. Uh, and Louisiana is just known for that, looking at uh, some horrible crises and finding opportunity. And congratulations for being here. You're the lucky one. So the overview I am going to give you uh, is just what's happened in the past and how we've been here before. We certainly are seeing some uniqueness to this particular crisis, but crises have happened before. And we're going to show you some of the opportunities in those crises and what we're talking about. Corey Elliott who is our genius at the local level with local um, advertising and marketing research, knowing what businesses are doing and how they're doing it. will jump in and tell us what's going on and what businesses just like you uh, are thinking and are actually doing. There's a percentage I want you to look for in some of his data. It's 
It's got a little yellow star next to it. So when that shows, sit up and pay attention because uh, there's going to be something really interesting, an interesting characteristic of that 16%. Jim Brown is going to jump in with some ideas. We think ideas are the new currency. So we can tell you it's probably a really, really good time to begin marketing yourselves right now and to take advantage of this. We're going to show you how that works. Jim is going to show you some ideas of how other businesses just like you have done it. Um, so that's going to be a real interesting part. We're going to ask you for your questions, sort of the back end of this and, and during the session as well. So if you have any questions or you want to challenge us and say, hey, I run this type of business, a mortuary, what should I be doing right now that would be tasteful or challenge us? We've got ideas for you. So we're going to do that. So let me go back 100 years. I told you I was going to give you a little perspective and tell you what happened during the Great Depression when this is an article from New Yorker magazine. And it said, when the depression hit, tell me if this sounds familiar, no one knew what would happen to consumer demand. Post, cereal, the big cereal brand at the time did the predictable thing. It rained in expenses and cut back advertising. Meanwhile, Kellogg said, oh, hell no. It doubled its ad budget, moved aggressively into what was the new medium of the day, which Post wasn't using, radio. Its profits increased and it became a market leader very quickly, and it still is today. Great example, but if you go back to 9-11, you'll see a very similar example with General Motors. General Motors watched as everybody, kind of like during the Great Depression, froze in place and watched those TV monitors with the World Trade Centers falling again and again and again on replay. They sprang into action. They created this very positive campaign called Keep America Rolling. They offered a 0% discount. They added a million units by the end of the year in three months' time while their competitors were just sitting there dumbfounded. They were like deer in the headlights. They didn't know what to do. You bet that every car manufacturer today knows this story very, very well. It's been publicized a lot. Every car manufacturer is, is doing the same thing. GM took a page out of Kellogg's book. Toyota, Honda, Chevrolet, et cetera, taking a, a page out of GM's book. So this is what we want you to think about. Don't ride that orange line that you see in this chart, and that's consumer confidence. Consumer confidence went way down during the Great Recession 10 years ago, and it's certainly gone way down right now. And if you're riding that line and watching the news and thinking, oh, gosh, everything is closed, nothing's going to happen, you're not going to be riding that blue line. And the blue line is consumers are still spending significant and it's still rising. The amount of things that people are buying your own habits. You've bought a lot in the past uh, a couple of weeks, haven't you? Not just extra toilet paper and hand sanitizer and face masks and things like that. Things, believe it or not, jewelry and mulch and uh, pet care services and pizza and you name it. So if you've got a woe is me story and you're here saying, oh, well, they don't understand my business. I can't do anything right now. Go ahead and type it in and challenge us. We will give you some ideas. You have to give people an idea to buy what you're selling right now. Give them the idea. They might buy it now and redeem it for a future purchase when your store opens. But promotions is what you want to be doing. And it says it right here on the Small Business Administration Coronavirus Guidance and Loan Resources site. They talk about marketing and say it's critical for you to communicate openly with your customers right now. You know that. Tell them the status of your operations, et cetera. But look what they say about promotions. Promotions will incentivize your customers who may be reluctant to patronize your business. Isn't that why you're here? At this one, because you're thinking customers to patronize your business and how in the world if my doors are closed i have a service related business and visit homes there are lots of promotions that you can engage in right now what you want to be doing is stealing away your customers for that day when the doors open the sun comes out and you your competitor throws open their doors and says okay i'm open for business where the hell is everybody you will have been very active during this very critical period and taken away their customers because you've given them a reason to buy why your competitors are sitting there saying, mm, oh, we shouldn't do anything right now. So I want to talk about promotions and Jim Brown's going to help you a little bit with that later. But what I want to tell you, what I want to tell you is it's not this. This is branding. If you've got the money to spend, go for it. And this is great. These are nice, warm messages from McDonald's and Coca-Cola, but we're not talking about this type of messaging. We're talking about something that generates 
income now, that generates sales now, that generates contacts of people who are ready, who will be ready to buy when things open their door, people open their doors again. You want them to be your customers. So we're going to put you in touch with local businesses like yourself right now by introducing Corey Elliott. He's our Vice President of Local Market Intelligence, and he knows above anybody else in the country what small businesses are doing with their marketing and advertising expenditures. Corey? Great. Thank you, Gordon. And thank you, everybody, for uh, showing up to this webinar. It was mentioned before that knowledge is power. I firmly believe that being the data research guy, I think there's a lot of value in understanding what's going on out there and what you can do about it. And a lot of those answers lie in data. So what I'm going to show you are results of a survey and a panel. Uh, we run, Burrell runs the largest local business marketing survey in America. Thousands of local businesses like yourself answer uh, this survey. It's all about marketing. And then we also run an SMB panel. We have uh, hundreds of businesses on our panel. We ask them just a couple questions every month. They get the results, we get knowledge, and, and we share that. So we have our uh, finger on the pulse of what's going on uh, with local small and medium businesses. And I'm going to show you some stats and I want you to see where you fall if you agree with your peers. So let's start by going back to the heady days of 2019 and uh, what we learned uh, from local businesses about what they thought about advertising and about marketing. See if you agree with this. 50% of local businesses agree with Wanamaker's Lament. What's that? That's the little phrase down there at the bottom. Half my advertising works. The trouble is I don't know which half. Ha ha, right? Well, not so funny when, when half of all local businesses agree with that. 48% have no strategy for selling an ad budget or for uh, setting an ad budget, I should say. They, they are just going, winging it, so to speak. 58% are unsure they're even spending the right amount. Um, so there's 58% of you, your peers, who think they might be overspending, some might think they're underspending, some just don't know. But most of all, what we discovered from this and from listening to you guys is that most of you are trying to handle marketing on your own. You're your own CMO. You're going up to that buffet of marketing choices and, and getting a little bit of this and a little bit of that and hoping to heck it works. So you aren't relying on an ad agency. You aren't relying on one particular media rep. You're doing it yourself which is daunting and challenging, but the economic circumstances were such where it was okay. Let me show you what I mean. We asked this question of our panel. We asked this repeatedly every three, four months for the last couple of years. How would you characterize the current economic situation uh, for sustaining a small business? The red line are the percentage of, of local businesses who said it's poor. There were the one extreme. The blue line is the other extreme. Those who said that was excellent. You can see it's been going up since December of 2018. Up, up, up. 18% saying, man, it is excellent in December of 2019. Well, we asked this question again in March. What do you think those lines look like? They look like this. So now 73% of local businesses saying, ooh, it is a poor economic situation right now for sustaining a small business. So the hurts all, all around, everybody's feeling it, or at least 73% are really feeling it. We asked a couple of other questions in this survey too. How are you being impacted? When will it end? How does it affect your ad spending? And then what could local media companies do to help you? I'm gonna let Jim take that one because it fits a little bit better into his section when he's talking about ideas. But I wanna take you through some of these, see if you fit in with your peers or not. Um, for instance, uh, this, we asked how best, what best describes how much your business is being impacted by the pandemic. 86% are seeing a negative impact with 52% saying, ooh, it's gonna be more than 30% down. So yeah, a lot of local businesses like yourself are feeling a very real impact. But a lot of them, a lot of you are also foreseeing an end. When we asked how long do you think this is gonna last or how long do you think the impact on your business will last, 42% said one to four months. Do you agree with that? Do you agree with your peers? 27%, one out of four, say sometime between three and four. So there's a little bit of glimmer of hope here of, you know what, this isn't gonna last forever. We're gonna get through this. It's gonna be uh, crunchy for a while, but we're, we'll, at the end of four months, we'll, we'll get through it. That's the, 
ongoing thought right now. Hey, then Corey, have, um, yeah. can I quick, quickly ask you, we're, we're redoing the business barometer survey. I think we're asking this question again. Um, and what do you think the view will be after, you know, more weeks into that? Is there more optimism, more pessimism, or roughly the same? I think it's going to be roughly the same at this point. I don't think it's, I, 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 that's what I'm thinking, but we aren't going to know until we, <laughs> everything is moving so rapidly uh, that we we aren't going to know until we, we launch it. But the good news is we'll be getting results back next week. Great. Looking forward to it. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. And I understand there might be a little bit of audio uh, uh, cutting in and out. Uh, so we are aware of that. We're working on that right now. All right. Well, so on, on that, by the way, Corey, if I could just jump in, and I should have mentioned this up front, the audio fading is typically on the users and with your connection. It doesn't occur to everyone. However, if if our connections are fading in and out, then it would occur to to everyone. I don't see that uh, that ours are because I am hearing everybody on there. So it's it's typically the individual. What we would suggest you do is, uh, if you're still having problems, there's a little box up at the top that says computer audio or phone call. Uh, try to try using the phone, or if you're on a phone, try redialing uh, back in. And, and we'll talk slowly, and so you, hopefully you can dial right back in. You won't miss, miss too much. Corey, back to you. All right, thanks. Um, so then we asked, okay, since this is all about marketing, what about marketing and advertising? What are you going to do looking forward? Are you going to Cut, you're going to increase, you're going to stay the same. This is what your peers said. 44% plan to maintain or increase spending. 52% did say, yeah, I'm going to cut. And that's that's important uh, for a couple of reasons. Number one, remember that slide from before that said 73% saw it was a poor economic uh, conditions right now to run a business. So you would you expect that 52% to be more? Maybe, but there's something about that. See that 16% and Gordon alluded to that little gold star. There's something about that 16% that even though it's a poor economic condition, why are they increasing? And we think uh, when we look at that 16%, it isn't a particular kind of business. It's not like all auto dealers or what have you, or toilet paper manufacturers. It is the commonality between all of them. Is there marketing expertise is a little bit more. What I mean by that is we grade each uh, business on our panel is kind of graded on how long they have done marketing and how many hours, how many years they've done marketing, how many hours a week they've done marketing. And so they kind of get graded internally uh, on how uh, well they, they know marketing. And that seemed to be the common factor are those ones who are spending more is their marketing expertise was just, or experience was just a little bit higher. So keep that in mind. I'm going to switch now to the other side of marketing, and that's people who are receiving your information, right? Because that's the other half are consumers. Here's what's happening there. Nielsen, which runs uh, studies media consumption in households, found that media consumption rises nearly 60% when consumers are asked to stay at home. So think of uh, you guys, I don't have to tell you, uh, think of hurricanes, things like that, where people are, are forced to stay at home, media consumption goes up. And that's everything from watching local news uh, to, uh, to binge watching uh, Netflix. So it's overall media consumption. When we try and switch it and look at a bit, a bit more local level, you still see these big increases. This happens to be uh, visits to news sites, a lot of local news sites, by the way, 40 uh, aggregated together here. Comscore saw a 60% jump and just keeps going up uh, in times of crisis. Why? Because people want, not only do they want general information, they want local information. They want to understand what's going on in their backyard. Okay, so I want to put two and two together now. So we've heard about uh, media consumption going up, and we've heard about people pulling back advertising. What, what does that mean? We think conceptually, it's something like this is happening. So as there's this 60% growth in media usage, there's also a reduction in ad buying. There, there are people who are pulling back. That 51% who said, ooh, yeah, I'm going to pull back. 
that creates this big green area of opportunity where you have a larger audience, you have more engagement, but yet there's less ad clutter there. Or yeah, we need to call that, uh, we, or either we should have made it yellow, so it could have said making lemonade from lemons, or I guess we could call it making lime made from limes. This is the slides uh, everybody really should be fixated on. It really kind of pulls together everything that, that Corey said. So if, as many people do during a webinar, you're texting or feeding the dog or petting the cat or something, stop a second, look at this slide, this is it. It shows that this great opportunity is created when media usage grows. More of us are spending more time in front of uh, televisions or newspapers, magazines, radio, et cetera, consuming more information, as Corey showed. Uh, and your competitors, the people not on this call, have dropped out. So that creates this great, great opportunity. So terrific slide, Corey. Great, great insights there. Yeah, I, I think it, I think this is very important to understand. Uh, but now let's start to turn our attention to, great, there's an opportunity. What do we do with that opportunity and what do we communicate? Well, before I turn it over to Jim, I want to share one, piece, one last piece of information that we found just last week. This is from the GWI uh, Coronavirus Research. Um, they asked their panel, I think they have a couple thousand consumers, and they asked this question, which steps do you expect retailers and e-commerce businesses to take? I think this is important to see what consumers are expecting from you, right? That can help your communication, what you communicate to consumers if you're if you're addressing what's important to them. You're going to get a copy of this uh, this presentation, so you'll you'll know that this slide is in here and you can refer to it. But I think it was an important one to share with all of you. But more important are ideas, and nobody has a better uh, gra grasp on local ideas than this man, Jim Brown, president of Burrell Associates. Jim, take it away. Great, Corey, thank you very much, and thank you everyone for being here. You know, it, we get a lot of questions about, yeah, but should I really be advertising right now? I mean, I wanna be sensitive to this environment we're in. Well, I want you to change your thinking on that just a little bit and substitute the word communication for advertising. It's always a good time to be communicating and communicating with your customers and those prospects that might exist out there that you want to reach. And for many of you, that's where the new opportunity is going to be to serve a new customer. And we're going to talk a little bit about that. Um, the uh, U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, specifically the CDC, came out with a document uh, right after 9-11 about uh, the psychology of a crisis and how to communicate during a time of crisis. And there were um, there were a couple of things that came from this. They just updated it last year, by the way. And um, I want you to consider this. When people um, process information during a time of crisis, you know, they behave a little bit differently. And one of the things that this document pointed out is that people tend, number one, to look at national media sources at first but they very quickly turn to local media to get a better feel for what's happening right here in my own backyard. And they're looking for confirmation about what's really happen, happening. The second thing is when you're communicating during a time of crisis, there really are four elements you need to be mindful of. One is keep your message really simple. You wanna simplify whatever message you're putting out there. It needs to be super clear. It needs to be consistent. So whatever you're putting out there, it needs to be that same message over and over and over again. Make sure you're repeating it. It needs to come um, in a timely way, all right? So you don't want to wait a long time. You want to be reacting and getting messages out there quickly. Um, it also needs to come from a credible source. So make sure you're doing that whenever you're, you're marketing and putting messages out there. So we're going to give you a couple of uh, thoughts here. And that survey, that question that Corey mentioned, that last one of how can local media partners help? When we pose that question to folks like you, there were really three things that came out. You're looking for some advice, you want some help in promotion, and you're really looking for ideas. That seems to be the biggest area. What kind of ideas can you give me? Help me be relevant. Even though I can't see my customers face to face, how do I communicate with them? What do I say? What's a good message to deliver right now that's calm, it's confident, and inspires people right now? So we're gonna talk a little bit about how you can do that, what some of those messages are. Now, many of you follow into one of these three categories here. 
your business is either deemed essential, right? We know what a lot of those businesses are. They tend to be things like grocery stores and hospitals and healthcare workers right now, these essential businesses. Many of you fall in what's considered more of a non-essential business that might be a bit more at risk right now, particularly if your business uh, relies on people to gather together in a single location, uh, casinos are an example of that, or movie theaters. And then there's a large group of businesses that are a bit more in limbo right now. Um, the, these are businesses that might be more in service categories, all right, but you may have a business where you can deliver to people or interact with customers a little bit differently. Instead of them coming to you, you go to them. But in these two cases on the right here, non-essential and limbo businesses, your businesses are really best served by promotions. And so we want you to think about promotions as a mechanism to start communicating with your customers. I'll hit on that in just a minute, but first, a little bit of advice for you in terms of your messaging and what you put out there. What I'd like you to consider two big things. One, consider broadening your business proposition. You know, think a little bit differently about what you do. It's not just the core business offering you have, but how do you really serve the needs of businesses in your market? As an example, if you're a kennel, you know, you're not only boarding dogs while people are on vacation, what you're really doing is caring for uh, an important member of a family, right? Their pet. And how you care for that might be a bit differently right now. You might shift your business where you're delivering dog food or you're delivering advice on how to care for a pet and the motions they might be going through during this crisis, right? So think broadly about the business you're in. The second is consumer habits have changed. And what people are doing right now, it's changed a lot. And so how do you take advantage of that situation and help people where they are with the new challenges they have before them? So what we would suggest is that you reach out to 100% of your customers, however you can. And when possible, by the way, use the telephone. If you can reach out to people by phone, there's just no substitute for that. Now, it's not practical in every situation, so you may also use other media. And we would suggest use mass media right now. So you want to go beyond just your current customers and reach new folks. So many new ideas and opportunities are going to spring from this that come from new customers you've never served before, and you will miss them if you're not using some mass media. You want to communicate your your business status, of course, all those things that Corey listed, you know, your hours have changed or what you're doing to keep your employees or customers safe. You certainly want to do that. You want to be careful with that messaging. But again, I think you want to look at promotional campaigns because they're going to help you both drive sales now, but also generate future sales. So what are promotions? Um, really, if you think about it, promotional campaigns, they, they tend to have some sort of deadline, right? These aren't things that last forever they tend to have some sort of mechanism that allows people to interact with you. They fill out a form, they give you information so that you can reach out to them again and again and again. That's an important mechanism. You're gonna feel the impact of that. Whatever kind of promotion you put together, make sure it communicates that you're part of this community, that you're open, all right? Even though your doors might be closed, you're still open and that you want to help and how you can help. Remember, these are short-term promotional opportunities, they have a deadline and you want people to react now. The idea is it's gonna drive leads. So I'm gonna give you a couple examples. Some of these are more national in scope. It's not about that, it's about understanding what you could do that's similar, all right? So as I show you these quickly and I'm gonna go through them very fast, think about, oh, how can I do that? So think about airline travel. No one's thinking about traveling right now, right? Well, what is American Airlines doing? They understand that at some point, you know, people are going to want to travel again. They're going to be able to. There's a pent up demand. The way they're taking advantage of that is you fill out a form of saying, where would you like to go first? And of course, they can push messages out to you. If you think there are no opportunities for, like, say, a moving company, right? Take a page from what U-Haul is doing. They realize, hey, there's a new business opportunity out there to serve college students who, you know, are having to pack up their dorms or their apartments and they're offering storage units. So again, the idea here, new customers or serving customers in a new way. Here's another one. How about um, a dermatologist? Now, the idea is you may not be a dermatologist, but look what we see happening right now is telemedicine is here. The point here is you may be able to interact with your customers via the computer, via mobile devices, via webinars, whatever it might be. Use these new technologies to communicate with customers 
great opportunities to do that. We're seeing a lot of folks, particularly in the healthcare community, doing this right now. Now, let's think about messaging for a minute. Now, you want to make sure you're not tone deaf. You want your message to resonate with people in the environment they're in. So let's take a look at uh, motorcycles. You know, who's buying motorcycles right now? Well, there's a dealership in California that put together a really cool little video, um, and I think they're using multiple types of media to promote this. But their messaging is, we are the original social distancing. You know, get on a Harley and get away from it all. That's the kind of message you want to put out because, you know, that's how people are feeling. You know, okay, I, I, I got to kind of get out. I'm stuck in my, my home or my apartment or I got to get out of this home office. And they're talking about how their product helps you do that. At the same time, they're spreading a good message about social distancing. All right, how about uh, vacations? You know, who's thinking about going on a vacation right now? Well, a lot of people would love to do that. Uh, but would you really want to be marking it? Well, here's an example of something you could consider. There is a pent up demand and you might consider pre-selling. However you do this, you know, we're seeing a lot of this where buy it now because at some point it's gonna cost a lot more later, spend that money. And again, we know there's pent up opportunity. There's an opportunity to pre-sell that. Here's another example. I think nobody's buying office attire. I'm gonna let Gordon speak to this one because this actually came in his mailbox, this ad right here. And I think it's a good creative example, looking sharp, from the waist up. And Gordon, you got this when you were on a webinar, I think. Is that right? On a Zoom meeting. They were looking at me. Um, no, I think it was <laughs> I was coincident, but it made me kind of turn around and kind of think. I was checking my email during the Zoom call. Uh, but it was just, it was bizarre that it came in. And not only did it come in, I got a call from uh, the, the sales rep. And he didn't ask me about this, just asked me how I was doing. And then not long after that, after we were talking about, hey, you know, I'm ready to get back into action, basically, <laughs> this one came. So it, 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 there wasn't any connection with me personally and what I was doing. That's not the point. The point is they kind of connected overall with the mood of everybody. You know, most people are at home. They're doing Zoom meetings or webinars and you know, they got their pajama bottoms on and a nice shirt at the top. You should look good from the waist up. They didn't sit there silent and said, oh, we're dead in the water now. They gave you a reason to buy. And that's what a lot of this is about. You've got to give your customers and potential customers a reason to buy. If you are looking at these saying, oh, well, they're mostly national companies or they're chains or they're not local enough. Woe is me. Type it in. Challenge us right now. Go for it. Uh, we're going to take a couple of your questions, as many as we can take in just a couple of minutes, and we'll see. We, you might stump us. We might go, wow, that's just a really, really tough one. But I don't know if we've been stumped yet on any of these. So type them in. We'll see what we can do for you. Jim, I'm going to turn it back to you. Yeah, you bet. Thanks. And it's funny, this ad that's up on the screen right now, they could even talk about, boy, right now, I'm probably going to need a new suit. My uh, waist is expanding by the moment. <laughs> so, uh, here, here's another one. How about a dry cleaner? Now, remember, I talked about thinking a bit more broadly about your business, what new problems people have. So you might think, well, no one needs to get their clothes cleaned right now. They don't need the dry cleaner. Well, here's a great example of a dry cleaner pivoting a little bit and saying, hey, we'll do 25% off for wash, dry, and fold service. Right now, people are at home, the kids are there, and the you know, clothes are multiplying like crazy. You know, let us take care of that for you. So it's a great message that serves a new need that maybe people haven't had so much before. Here's another one, how about food trucks? You think it'd be a tough time to be in that business, right? Well, we're seeing some innovative things. You know, One is getting good attention. Here's seven reasons why to support us. Don't estimate people's desire to help right now and to help local businesses. We're all in it together. And here they put a, a couple good reasons why you want to use them. But things have, have shifted and they've shifted along. You think about a food truck, it's all about spontaneity. You just go in and you order what they have. You walk up to the truck and, and order. Well, some of these food trucks are now taking pre-orders. They're coming into neighborhoods now. Some municipalities are making that uh, freeing up the regulations, letting them come in, and letting them uh, actually put together family meals instead of just one meal at a time. You know, pre-order your food, and we'll come in and deliver it to you. So the point here again is, can you shift your business offering a little bit, interact with people perhaps online, 
and do business that way. You also want to be very careful with the messaging you put out there, okay? So we recommend don't go it alone. Now is not a time to get it wrong. And I'm not suggesting this is right or wrong, but here's something we saw out now, free toilet paper when you order our food. I'm not sure that's a message you want to put out there. Maybe it works, maybe it doesn't, but be careful about that. Again, you don't want to get that message wrong. So there's a whole lot of other ones we could go into. I'm going to hit real quickly a few thoughts for you um, on, you know, just, just ways to think about your business. Landscaping service. Now you might think, okay, we got this question from somebody. Well, I'm a, I'm doing a landscaper, but people are at home. They're taking care of their own yards right now. Well, maybe it's time to partner with somebody. Consider partnerships. You, you might have a product that is complementary to somebody else. So maybe it's a case where, you know, uh, get the mulch delivered and we'll install it for free. Um, so you partner with somebody else that you buy things from. I don't know, but consider that as an opportunity. Financial services, the point I want to make here is I've got two financial planners I work with pretty careful, closely. One of them has picked up the phone and called me a half dozen times. We've had great brief conversations. The other, simply sending emails to me, frankly, are fairly generic. Who do you think is going to get my business? Whenever possible, connect with people in a way that's really personal. It really helps. The plaster example. Look, we know right now people are at home. They're looking around. I can't tell you how long the honeydew list is I'm getting from my wife as she sits around and finds things like cracked plaster in our master bathroom and says, we need to fix this stuff. There's some pent up demand. Think about ways you can engage with people today so that when things start to improve and they're ready to have you come in their home, you're the one they think of first. You think nobody's buying jewelry right now? I'm a great prospect. You know why? I'm getting ready to celebrate my 30th wedding anniversary. My wife and I are, were planning a trip to Italy of all places. We're not going now. I still have the money. I still need to do something important for my wife. Jewelry would be a great opportunity for me, right? So don't think people aren't spending money. They are. They've just shifted it a bit differently. I already mentioned the dog kennel example, you know, thinking a bit differently about it. But Gordon, you heard a really interesting ad the other day, and I think maybe it would be worth spending a minute talking about that real quickly. Sure. And I'll, I'll take the last four, Jim. Uh, but the, the dog kennel one, just briefly, and type your questions. I know we have some coming in. We're going to get to them in about a minute and a half. Dog kennel one, funny dog talking, looking straight at the screen, old dog, white whiskers, saying, these people home every day on the computer, on the phone. I need a vacation from them. So guess what? The dog kennel turns into, as Jim said, something else than a dog kennel. It's a dog spa. It's a place to take your dog to get away from you. Real estate services. Somebody says, it's, uh, we're dead in the water with real estate services. Well, there are a lot of people wondering whether it's a good time to put their home in the market or a good time to take their home off the market. Should they lower the price? Should they postpone their move? Setting up a time where you can capture all of those people and their interest right now captures all of them for the time at which they're ready to, to make a change. Document shredding, great one. Uh, Corey is known as a little bit of a pack rat. He's got papers piled up on his desk and I bet his wife probably is looking at it at home saying, man, I could use document shredding services right now. Otherwise, document shredding services would be dead in the water. This uh, slice of New York pizza, great examples, pizza shop in New York on Broadway or three locations in, in Manhattan. Uh, everything's shut down in Manhattan. Nobody's buying pizza. They do take call in orders. They doubled their orders by asking everybody if they would like to add a pie uh, to their order. And it would be sent over with a thank you note to the people, volunteers of the hospital. They doubled their orders in one day. And everybody in New York is doing it. So great, great examples there of being creative. Corey, I'm going to jump right over to you because I know we have loads of questions. Yeah, we do. Okay, I'm going to start at the top and then might jump around for everybody online. But here's the good news. All these questions can get answered. Um, okay, well, let's start at the top. Office furniture industry. If you're If you sell office furniture... What do you do? Oh, boom. Great idea. Uh, how many people need a better chair? Uh, you know, how many people need a better desk? I went to uh, Office Depot yesterday and they were out of just about everything. Um, so you got to shift to home offices and think, OK, everybody has an office and it probably really needs to be be furnished right now. You could deliver. There are things you're just going to have to do. But, yeah, there are quite a few folks working from home realizing that they need uh, new furnishings, you know, to equip their office a little bit better. So I think it's a great opportunity to shift your message. 
yeah, and shift it towards level. providing providing advice about how to set up a home office. So again, yeah. think more broadly about your business. It's not just about the furnishings. It's you know what can you do to keep the clutter down or to keep it focused or whatever. So think broadly about that. Good, good. Yeah, question. I'm sitting in that chair at home a lot more, and I'm ruining the carpet now. So I need one of those plastic or glass mats. Advertise that. I'll buy one. Corey, what else? <laughs> Well, the, that dovetails. I'm going to jump down. Uh, when you think about doing your business a little bit different, listen to this. I'm an, First of all, we have an elf on the line. I'm an elf that helps people with their to-do lists. What is a smart way to navigate social distancing with my high-risk clients, mostly upper middle class baby boomers? My house elf and handy elf services force me to go to their homes. How can I offer these uh, limbo, she put herself in limbo, or he or she, she put herself in limbo, uh, services to a high-risk community. Oh, oh, the jokes along with that one. Um, <laughs> you're just going to have to really, really get creative with the messaging. There are people who still want help at home. There are steep yep. people who still need it. You kind of have to put yourself in people's uh, places. You know, Think about not your current business practices, but how has the mindset shifted and how can you help people you are going to have to take some risks there will be people who will criticize you for advertising you have to be very careful gm was criticized heavily during 9 11 as being capitalists and everything else but in the end it was a really really smart thing to do because they kept america rolling again so i'm just saying be really careful uh with the messaging but also don't be afraid to and try to tap into the stream of conscious of what people are thinking about right now. I, I would also would suggest, yeah, and I, I would also su suggest you've got a certain constituent, certain client that you serve, but is there somebody else who could use a service? Maybe there's a B2B opportunity right now, right? There's businesses who, gosh, I'm at home. I can't interact with people the way I normally do. Maybe you can serve them a little bit differently. So again, think a bit more broadly about what business you're in and communicate to all those clients, what you're doing to keep them safe, alleviate their fears. I think that's an important message right now. Hey, Corey, why don't you ask one that you can answer? Don't put it all on us. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's an interesting one about how to navigate being tone deaf. Uh, when you're, without putting anybody on the spot, when you're you're a marketing person in your, in your uh, business and your boss wants you to ignore everything and go on like everything is just fine. Um, I, I don't know about that, but I think you can get creative. Uh, they happen to, if I take this literally, I don't know what to do or how to sell bug spray during this time without feeling tone deaf. Well, is it tone deaf to say, hey, you spending more time at home? And I didn't say anything. I just assumed you're spending more time at home and I don't want to be in a house full of bugs. So I think that's a way to kind of balance the two without coming out and and saying, you know, having like Jim said, coronavirus in your title of your emails or anything like that. But you can still at least nod to the situation. Yeah. And there's some advertising that just basically has you raising your hand and saying, I'm here. And that is advertising that says we care about the community. Uh, we're here for you, you know. Bob's bug spray. Okay, it's a little weird, but at least you are advertising and you're getting your name out there. It's a little more brand advertising. Uh, it's not as direct, but um, anyway. Okay, what else, Corey? We're a large format signage printing company that is very campaign and event driven. What are some good ideas of messaging and or a campaign? So you're making <laughs> you're making signs for for events that aren't happening. Oh, great one. Um, so uh, it leads to the example of, okay, stop making signs for events because there aren't any events, but hell, you can make signs. Jim, give him your example of the, uh, of the portrait maker and the frame guy. There was a portrait maker says we do family portraits and nobody's doing family portraits. And then there was another independent one says, Hey, we frame pictures. Nobody's coming in to get their pictures framed. Boom. Here's the idea, Jim. Yeah, that's the partnership idea, right? A complimentary business. And so what the photographer is doing is going around and from the safety of their car, taking pictures of folks on their front porch, get the family together. Look, people are going to look back at this 10 years from now. And, and as hard as it is, there's going to be some, some you know, good memories about the family being together and uh, maybe not Gordon's family. They all. <laughs> oh, my God. No, I can't but, wait to get out of the house. 
getting <laughs> getting them on the front porch, maybe some props and so forth, and taking that picture, and then the framer being able to frame it for them and giving away you know a certain number of those frames. So enter a contest to do that and schedule it online. But again, the point is there could be somebody interesting to partner with you as a signage company who has that same need, shift your business, what new things can you solve? Maybe you're printing something for people in their front yards, a well-wish message right now to caregivers or a message uh, to support those in the community uh, who are helping. You know, or uh, or big signs. Yeah, big. We can. We have time for one more, and then we're going to end it in about two minutes. We're going to do a real quick response on this one. Signs for corporations that you know are put out uh, above their buildings or in their yards. You know, we care. We're in this together. Whatever things like that. Think about this. GM has the same problem right now, and they're retooling to produce respirators. Right. Uh, big printing co- or small printing company, a local market. Just saw it this morning. Has the same problem. Nobody's coming in and buying printing supplies. They took their heaviest fiber-borne paper and created uh, um, face masks, breathing masks, and put company logos on it and are selling them to companies. Get creative. Look at the assets that you have and decide how to re-leverage them into serving the public in a way. One quick question. We're going to give it a a 30-second response, and then we're going to uh, turn it back over to the good folks at the Business Report. All right. What are your recommendations for privately held insurance producers who mainly thrive on face-to-face interactions and don't advertise on traditional media? Oh, that's a Jim question. Yeah, well, might might be a time to change that thinking, right? Maybe <laughs> I was just going to say, that, that seems like a softball pitch. <laughs> well, I, I, true. again, uh, if you don't take anything else away from this, you should be considering, I might need to change the rules here. I might need to do business a little bit differently. So I would consider using media right now. It could be a great way. I'll also suggest to you, you might underwrite something someone else is doing for the community to keep your name, your image out there. People are looking for ways to help. Maybe you can partner with somebody else to do that. Great. We have a lot of other questions. Uh, I know that some came in prior. We've got a, a great one, and we actually have a response to for someone at uh, Garden View Assisted Living. And there's another one here. I can't tell exactly who it's from, but we'll get those to you. Um, and and Julio and his uh, his folks will will uh, get those off to you. But anyway, I'm going to turn it over to Julio at this time and thank everybody for listening. And I hope it's been helpful, Julio. Gordon, thank you very much. I want to thank uh, you, Jim and Corey, for today's presentation. And I also want to thank everybody on this webcast uh, for joining us. You know, a rising tide raises all boats, and that's what we're trying to do for our community, for our region, and for our state. I, w- I do want to let everybody know to check your email. We're going to be sending you a link uh, to the recording of this webinar in case you want to go back and review. Uh, there'll be an opportunity for you to kind of really marinate on some of the thoughts, some of the ideas, and some of the insights. Uh, But again, uh, I want to go ahead and uh, thank all of you for joining us today. And uh, we look forward to uh, seeing you all guys uh, soon. Take care. Stay healthy. Be safe and be strong. We're in this together. Have a great day. Thanks, everybody.